Hey there guys, it's me the Don Fanatic and welcome back to the Pokemon Premier League Division 1 Season 3 season. This week we are in week 7 and we are facing Dave aka Shroom Raver, a fan favourite, the champion of Season 2. Now last season obviously we managed to beat him 4-0 and make him suffer his first loss of the season. Season 1 we don't like to talk about after getting a 6-0 sweep against us from a bounced Gyarados. A moment which I wasn't proud of because I did forfeit the game halfway through. Season 3, it's a clean slate. Shroom is obviously languishing down at the bottom of the table, not hitting anywhere near the form he hit last season with his pretty damn amazing team. Uh, he still has a pretty damn amazing team on the screen, as you can see. But this team I have, I feel, is perfect to take him on. We have got physically defensive Florgis, specially defensive Skarmory, physically defensive Gastrodon, bulky offensive Latios, banded Darmanitan, and physical uh, Nidoking. We are more than equipped take on this team Shroom has brought to us. Let's get straight into it. I am always looking forward to games versus Shroom. They are always fun. He always beats me in Hacksmon Cup, so you know, I have to beat him at something at least. Shouldn't be too hard, right? Anyway, he doesn't have Scizor in his team, which means he has not got a solid way of taking down Floor. Just not even Weezing appreciates it, because obviously, as we know, Weezing hits on the special side of Poison moves. Floor just can take that. Turn 1, I need to put Shroom on the back foot, because Shroom is a good battler. I don't want him being on his best form. I need to put him on tilt, turn one. I predict him to switch out. Of course he's not going to stay in. Um, he doesn't really have anything that doesn't like Psychic, so I was like, you know what, I can click it. Moonblast and Psychic hit the team he's bought decently well with him. So he goes for Flamethrower here, expecting um, Skarmory. I knew this thing would be carrying Flamethrower or Fire Blast, that's why I stayed in. Plus Sludge Bomb or Sludge Wave isn't going to do too much to me. I also have Wish, so I can recover up. Basically, I've, I beat this thing one-on-one. -on -one. Now he can't stay in here, because he needs this thing. Um, because it helps against my Nidoking. So, he has to switch out. And here, we discover that Floor just has a hidden ability of Serene Grace, basically. I go for the Psychic, which is safe. I, I had to do it because I could have killed um, the Weezing there. And then, I expect that the Weezing was especially defensive to take on Nidoking. Um, so, I wasn't confident in Moonblast taking. I didn't do a Calc at the time. Um, here, I protect because I want to see if this is an offensive or a defensive Sylveon. The fact he gets with the Tom Pass reveals nothing to me because offensive Sylveon can do it for momentum and the uh, defensive can obviously do it for Wish, so I still don't know. Now, in comes Crocodile, and I get pretty lucky here in the fact that I didn't realise Crocodile actually gets Iron Tail. I mean, I should have probably figured it out. By now, everything that has a tail gets Iron Tail. And it's been bought on Mons before to deal with Florges. Um, I should have really thought it was going to be something that would happen because obviously when I didn't see Scizor, I was like, right, he can't take out Florges. He misses, it's fine. Gastrodon just walls Crocodile to hell and back. The max it can do is if, if it's Scarfed, it's 35% with Earthquake. I knew Jellicent was coming in here. It was either going to be Jellicent or what else could it have been? There was something else. I wasn't expecting Weezing to come in because it won't take a score. Um, so I toxic this thing, which is fantastic. And now I'm also pretty confident that this guy will either have a grass move or a toxic himself to deal with Gastrodon. I'm not going to stay in. He expects me to go into floor, just I imagine. He definitely expects me to switch. I don't know what into. Um, but I do actually go into Floor just because it's my best answer to the, um, to the Jellicent. I don't have Heal Bell this week, but it's something that doesn't mind being burnt. And to be honest, I'd rather have a burn on Floor just, um, because that means I won't be paralyzed and I won't be, um, toxic, which is brilliant on a wall, of course. So, in comes Sinatra, and this is actually where we find out that Floor just has, um, <laughs> Serene Grace as a second ability. You go for the Psychic, because obviously you want to kill that Weezing off. He's not getting a chance to try and recover up with Pain Split if he has it, which is fantastic. Um, and I get a special defense drop, which is fantastic, which means I can now stay in and definitely get damage off on this thing, whether he's offensive or not. Based on this damage, I'm thinking he's physically defensive. He goes for the Wish here, and he also gets a special attack drop. So now, he can't stay in a Baton Pass because he will die. He'll also pass on the um, stat drops if he did do that, so he has to switch out here. He switches out into the Jellicent, and I'm going for Moonblast because I know it will kill him, and he hasn't got a safe switch into Fairy Moves, now he hasn't got Scissor with him. Um, and that does a solid amount. Um, because of that, uh, I'm expecting this thing to be physically defensive Jellicent. It's got base 105 special defense or something, and pretty big HP stat. So, considering I have no special attack investment, that Moonblast did pretty impressive damage, right? So now I'm going to quick protect, because I need to scout if this thing has a grass move or toxic. Um, and he has toxic, so I'm like, fine. Um, he has a special attack drop. He knows I'm going to probably switch here. Uh, and if he can catch something on the switch with a Scald, because obviously the Skarmory switch looks quite obvious at this point. So I can play around the Toxic. I figure, right, he's got a minus uh, special attack. 
Uh, if he wants to go for Shadow Ball, it's not going to do much because I'm bulky Latios. <laughs> School does pitiful damage. And now this is a chance for me to um, start setting up with my stored power can't mine Latios. This is a last minute addition over Zorok. Zorok would have been equally as handy, I think, in the end of this game, but uh, Latios, this is like the first time I think I've properly fallen in love with this guy. Uh, I go for the command on the switch because obviously he's not going to stay in. He's probably expecting me to be, I mean, even if I was just a normally offensive Latios, I would have wrecked house to his team. Um, I go for the calm mind, and at this point, we were doing this in cool. Shroom had his webcam on, I had my webcam on, and Shroom just was like, his face, he, he just dropped. He was like, oh no. So I reveal store power. Um, I only have one calm mind up, so this is base 60 attack at plus one. So it's still going to do big damage. But just think, if I get another calm mind up, I will be at plus two on a base 100 attack. So it's going to do damage. Now I know this thing is scarfed um, based on the way he led of it. Based on the way he's played with it so far, the fact that he brought it in meant he was either willing to risk the speed tie or uh, was guaranteed to outspeed me. Now, Draco, I knew Draco wouldn't kill me if he was scarfed, uh, modest or timid, unless he got a crit, um, because of the calm mind. Now, I get a recover off here, he's now at minus two special attack, which means I now get a free turn to set up another calm mind, which means I am now at plus two with a base 100 special attack, which is stab. Now, it's actually enough to nearly one shot a physical defensive Sylveon. So it's pretty impressive power-wise, this thing. Um, I would need Rox has, uh, Rox help, but I haven't had a chance to set that up yet because I'm actually running it on Nido King this week. I go for the store power, take out this uh, Sylveon. I think Shroom is just sacking it at this point. So Latios is currently sitting at about 80% health uh, and is at plus two, plus two, and it's looking good. Now, what I haven't said about this Latios is what well, you might have already guessed by looking at the HP stat. I am max special attack, I am max HP. I have done this because I can live a crunch from a non-choice banded um, crocodile with over 80% health. As you can see, I live on 5%. I'm not sure if it was a roll. If it was, it was probably in my favour because I had not the couch before the game. And I knew that Ice Beam, even without any Calm Minds up, was going to kill this thing, pretty much. 97.5 to 110% roll or something like that. So it's a very good chance, but a plus 2 obviously it's going to die. I could have tried to preserve the 6-0 here. I probably should have in hindsight. A 6 0 Shroom is what every guy dreams of. Um, but I do decide to stay in. I was like, right, no, I know I need differential, but I need the points as well. I'm not safe from falling into the relegation sort of dogfight yet. So I let Latios down because, you know, it's got three kills. It's taken out half of Shroom's team. I can't be mad at that. Here is the one bad player I make this game, and I I call it bad, but I really don't know what Shroom was thinking. So I bring in my physically defensive Gastrodon. I know he's locked into Side Shot. Um, and he stays in Side Shots again, and I live on five because I am bulky Nido King. I don't understand why he stayed in and did that, um, because I would easily beat him one-on-one -on -one, uh, with my Gastron. So now I know he's got si he's locked in Side Shock, I can bring him for just because I'm physically defensive on this thing, and obviously he can't hit me. Basically, Floor just, just shuts down Latias at this point, because um, I can Wish Protect, uh, all three moves that he reveals to me. Uh, he told me his last move was Healing Wish, he has Thunderbolt Draco Side Shock, it's not, it can't touch, it cannot beat Floor just. Um, so in comes Blood Dupe, the um, Jellicent. Now I'm going to go for a wish here. And my thought process was this. I can try and get this off. Either I get a successful wish off into Needy King while he clicks Recover. Because after Toxic, he's going to be at roughly half. If he wants to click Scald and kill Needy King, that's absolutely fine. Because Toxic will bring him to a range where Darmanitan's Choice Banded Adamant Flare Blitz will kill him. So I'm very happy in just doing this. Uh, Nido King isn't needed for anything else now because Sylveon's dead. Um, I'm not going to be outspeeding Latias. And Blaziken will outspeed me. So yeah, I wasn't too upset by it. The fact that she decided to put Scald was a little moral victory for him, I guess. Um, but he is now going to be at below half. Now, Darmanitan's Flare Blitz, Adamant Choice Band, to max defense Jellison, does 48 to 59%. He is well within range, um, and I am confident just clicking Flare Blitz, and uh, even if he did recover this turn, Toxic could bring him to a point where he would actually die to the next Flare Blitz. So um, he actually reveals here Rocky Helmet, uh, and even with the recall from Flare Blitz, I'm still sitting at a decent amount of HP at two thirds. Um, so in comes Latias, I know I have a, a safe switch in to Gorgeous, however I'm at slightly lower HP, I'm going to go into Skarmory. Um, the side shock is probably the most obvious play here because he can't go for Draco because I have a resistance and an immunity. And this does fearful damage, it just does nothing. So the aim of the game now is to try and get as much damage off to Latias as possible. 
I can just stay in and click Drill Pet, because at this point, all Shroom has left is uh, this Scarf Latias, which has taken no damage, and a Blaze Club, which hasn't been revealed yet. Um, I can stay in and Drill Pet this thing. I can play Roost games with him, because obviously, if I can get to my Sturdy, Blaziken isn't so scary. I can at least get solid damage off on it. Um, and it also kind of puts him off from setting up on me, because I'll have to get damage off on me first to break the Sturdy. So even if he got to plus six on me, I would still live and kill him with Drill Pet. So he does make the switch here. As I predict him to switch out, I'm still expecting this Latio Latias to have Thunderbolt. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm expecting it. Um, so I do Roost here, so I have my uh, Sturdy, and I don't know if Shroom was switching to try and get some fire damage off on me, or if he wanted to switch moves up. Uh, but I click Drill Peck here, and as you can see, because this is an offensive Latias, Drill Peck from uninvested uh, Skarmory is actually doing a decent amount. So two Drill Pecks have boarded some down lower than half. He reveals the Thunderbolt here, which does 92 damage. Um, so after um, Leftovers, I am not potentially going to be able to live another one, because I'm at 90. I didn't do the calcs, because I know I can just switch into Gastrodon at this point and win. Because if he wants to switch into Blaziken, he's taking the school. Um, and this thing can't touch me with Thunderbolt. He has to switch or just let this thing die. Um, so I can freely go for school here. Obviously, I can't burn the incoming Blaziken, but it will do a absolute butt ton to him. Um, I'm going to click Scald, and it does a clean 75%. There's no special attack investment. Here we see Citrus Berry, which uh, I think Shroom said afterwards it was some sort of set up Blaziken. Because um, Blaziken is the one thing he had that could probably tear through all my walls. Gastron doesn't like high jumping too much, but as you can see, we chew up that Earthquake because we are physically defensive. It was the best thing he had to hit me. I go for Scald again. It takes out Blaziken, and now it's Darmanitan, Glorgeous, Skarmory, and Gastrodon versus the very much weakened Latias. And as we know, whatever he locks himself into, he loses at this point. He goes for Thunderbolt, he can't hit Gastron. If he hits Draco Meteor, he can't hit Glorgeous. If he hits Psyshock, Skarmory wins. So it's game over, but to rub salt into the wound, Shroom does miss the Draco, which means uh, I do get the 4 0. I'm pretty sure Gastron would have lived without any special defense investment anyway, because Latias is the strongest. Plus, you know, Gastron is just bulky. So we come away with the 4-0 win versus Shroom Raver. Now, I haven't seen any team builder from him yet. I haven't heard his shit-talking rats. They are fantastic, by the way. Um, so make sure you go check him out. Links will be in the description. Um, so I want to really hear them before our game. Um, I was in total. I felt like I was in total control all game. He didn't get a chance to put any offensive pressure on me. Um, the fact he didn't have Scizor just made it a whole butt ton easier. I don't know why he didn't bring it. He said he tried and tried, but everything else he has on his team now, he felt he needed more. But, um, we are now 5-2. and two. We have recovered after a horrible, disgusting loss against Trab last season. Uh, last season, last week. That was just atrocious. Um, but we've recovered. We've beaten the reigning champ. We have put him down to 2-5. and five. He is well within the dogfight, trying to avoid the relegation zone, but he is Shroom. He will, of course, not get relegated. He's too good for that kind of stuff. We're now sitting at 5-2. and two. We are fourth in the league, only because we've got Shardy, Travesty, and Sam above us. Two of which we've lost to, and they're the only two losses I've had this season. We've still got Sam to go. Trav has still got Sam to go. Shardy and Trav have still got each other to play. There is a chance we can still climb this league table, and I am not giving up on that. 5-2 is easily like the best record I've ever had. I actually think last season I finished on 6 wins overall. We've still got 4 games left. After this win, I'm feeling pretty confident in the fact I'm safe from relegation this season. I can't assume that yet. I feel like I'm safe. But I'm putting in reassuring performances now. People are actually realising that I'm getting better at the game as well, which is a... Uh, it makes me feel really humble. Um, but Evelyn, don't go around saying I'm going to win the title in the next 2 seasons, because that is way too scary. Um, I'm too bad at the game to do that. But yeah, this team, this team just was perfect for Shroom. Um, but obviously, I love Shroom. Uh, he's a great player, really. Uh, as much shit talk as I might have given in this game, before the game, after the game in Skype, you know, we're good friends. Um, and it's always fun playing against Shroom. But, you know, we're now 2-1 and one against him in uh, league games. So um, it's always nice to have that kind of a positive feeling about a game. But... I don't want to ramble on too much. Next week, we have RTK, who had a dodgy start to the season. He's picked himself up. We all know RTK is a fantastic battler after how well he'd done it in Season 1, coming in half of the season, and Season 2, coming very near the top. It's either second or third. Second, I believe. Lost out on the title on the last day of the season, I think. 
Um, so we have him next. He's got some spooky mons. Mega Medicham. I can't. No, no, I don't want to face that thing. Um, anyway, I really have rambled on. Pretty much a quarter of the length of battle I've rambled. Um, I will leave you guys here. Make sure you go check out Shroom's links below. And the PVL, of course. And I'll see you for next week's game versus RTK. See you later.